could uh, come to order, please. Um, can I welcome uh, everybody to the uh, meeting of the Combined Authority? Um, before getting into the agenda, just a few uh, housekeeping points. First of all, can I remind everybody from ASCO to turn their mobile phones to silent for the duration of the meeting? And um, if uh, people are going to contribute to the debate, can I please ask members? and those presenting reports to speak into the, uh, the microphones. Um, and as, as usual, the meeting is being filmed by officers from the Combined Authority and will be available on Mosley Council YouTube channel later today. Um, and finally, as some of you may know, today is Young People's Takeover Day, and there are a number of young people um, in the meeting today who are shadowing various officers and um, members, so can I say a particular warm welcome to all those young people who are here to be observed from my authority. I hope you enjoy your time with us. Okay, um, so that takes us on to uh, item one. Can I ask, are there any apologies for absence? Okay, um, and item two is declarations of interest. Have any declarations of interest been received? of the combined authority meeting held on 17th October uh, attached in pages one to six of your agenda. Can, can I ask are these approved as a correct record of the meeting? Agreed? Thank you very much. Uh, okay, so that takes us on to the first um, substantive item, item four, um, one more program, and um, Councillor Liam Robinson. Liam, you're gonna take us through this report, please? Yeah, just briefly, it's uh, very much the latest incarnation of one North and updates on the report we had at the last meeting, so I don't propose to take us through it um, in terms of uh, roads and in too much depth and detail, but it's substantively very similar to what we had six, meeting, uh, six weeks ago. Um, I think one of the key things is the meeting six weeks ago, the meetings were very clear that the One North process needs to ensure uh, the Liverpool City region's prominence and that it actually directly caters for our ask and requirements with regard, regard to connectivity across the North, but specifically our ask with regard to high speed rail, both in terms of east west connections and also north south connections. Um, we fed that very strongly uh, into the process, both at an officer level and a political level, um, and that has been taken on board. We received um, a form of words earlier in the week of the latest draft of the programme, which I think gives us a lot of comfort around our high speed ask, both in terms of east, west, and north, south. And obviously, uh, that latest draft will be shared with leaders um, accordingly. The timescales very much going forward now are that uh, the proposal will be worked up in further detail uh, to be finalised for March of next year very much to feed into each of the political parties in terms of how they uh, define and develop their manifestos with a view trying to, to actually get some of the tangible developments into the spending review that's likely to come out in the summer of 2015 of the general election. So that's a very brief synopsis of the programme, but I'm happy to take any questions for you. Okay, any points, Joe? I just want to make a point. I made the point that we were discussing the issue about how important
there will be disruption. So please give a little bit more time for your journey uh, than you would otherwise. As I said, I've set out on this slide what the legal powers are, legal structures. Essentially, Halton Council acquired powers from government through a whole range of planning processes, compulsory purchase processes, tolling order processes. We are passing those powers over to the Mersey Gateway Crossings Board, that's what MGCB means on that slide, and they will deliver the powers uh, across to Mersey Link, who are the consortium that are delivering what is a design, build, operate and maintain uh, contract. Mersey Link is a consortium, this is a multinational consortium. Uh, the, the banking has come from Macquarie, an Australian company. The Korean government are investing through the Korean bank uh, and also FCC construction from Spain. The construction companies, the UK company that's driving this forward is Kia. We're very keen, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about local employment and local businesses on, an, on, an, on another slide. But Kia are, are the construction company working with both FCC Construction and Samsung Construction on the construction. And the website's operating, SANEF, the French company, will be the tolling company that will run the tolling provisions. So really very much a multinational uh, facility uh, and project. This breaks down, I want to show this slide because going back to the point about the congestion, people will be able to go onto the Mersey Gateway website. You can now click onto down my street and you will see this particular slide. This will tell you where the works are being constructed, when they are being constructed and what the diversions are. This is a really important uh, communication, not just for local residents moving around, but also for businesses who are having to continue to successfully deliver their business during quite a significant infrastructure project. And those are the different phases of the work that we're doing. Ironically, the orange in the middle, um, number four, I think it is, three, um, is the easiest part. Building the bridge is the easiest part of this project. The rest of the infrastructure is a lot more complicated. So where have we progressed so far? The temporary roads uh, to the main bridge foundations, the hall roads are being put in, have been put in. The trestle bridge is starting to come out of, of the, the, the estuary. And if you go onto the Mersey Gateway website, there's a live webcam that you can watch the progress uh, of, of, the, uh, of the construction if that's what, what you like to do. We've done a lot of demolition works, public utility diversions are taking place. The associated highways, as I say, are a major challenge for us. A lot of decontamination, Alton, because of its uh, history in chemicals, has a lot of contamination. We're doing a lot of work on decontamination and leading, uh, leading edge decontamination activities and consents and approvals need to be taken. The next few slides really just bring it to life for you on the ground. So the little uh, orange, uh, yellow block shows you where the photo is. Uh, the uh, line of the bridge and then the photograph shows you the work that's going on at the moment. So this is how the hall roads developed and you see there we've got a number of sites of special scientific interest so we need to protect those so there's membranes being put down to protect the environment, the flora and fauna uh, and then the hall road goes on. We're also having to protect in this particular case gas mains because there's lots of utilities that go in this facility we need to make sure people still get their utilities during the construction phase. Here, this is the St. Helens Canal, we're taking the fish out and we're taking them somewhere else and when we've done the works, we'll bring them back uh, and uh, they'll continue to thrive. So this isn't just a project about building a bridge, it's a very much an environmentally friendly and eco-friendly project as well. There's uh, some more construction taking place. That's to show you how the whole road looks now, and you'll see the Silver Jubilee Bridge in the background just to locate where you are. The um, interesting thing is the Trestle Bridge is starting to go out, so this picture was taken in August, and by September it had moved on a number of uh, uh, areas. This isn't what the bridge will look like when it's completed, <laughs> this is just the bridge to get you to building the bridge. 
which is in itself a significant infrastructure uh, exercise in itself. Those are some of the first pillars that have been laid into the, uh, into the estuary. Because we're building within the river, we have to build off barges, and this is a piling barge. Some interesting logistics, those of you who know the estuary well, will know that it tends to be more sand and mud flats than, than river at this particular point in the estuary. So we've got to get the balance right between the barges leveling up and then the cranes being able to operate. And you'll see here the cranes are now operational and are starting to fill the, uh, the coffer dam to put the, the, the first south pilot in. And the, uh, the, the video I'm going to show you will show a little bit more about that. Next 12 months, more of the same, I'm afraid. Um, what I wanted to focus on before I run out the, the DVD is this isn't just about infrastructure, it's about jobs, it's about creating business growth for the Liverpool city region and beyond. One of the things that we've put a number of uh, KPIs, so performance indicators into the contract so that local people can be employed in these jobs. These are the first four apprentices that Merzilink have appointed and there'll be more to come. They're working very closely with schools to ensure that young people are getting access to the learning that comes from building an infrastructure project of this nature so that we can generate the engineers and the road builders and the bridge builders of tomorrow from our workforce today and our young people today. Very, very important part of the project and not to be underestimated. Also, we put something in which we think is quite innovative, which is called Time Bank, which is where the construction company, so all those multinationals that I mentioned earlier, have to give time back to the community to help the community to do projects that they would otherwise be doing. So we're take, tapping into the expertise of these multinational companies to help local schools, local businesses, local community centres to develop things that they might not have been able to do previously. And this is time that's being given free by, by uh, Merzilink and, and the, uh, the people working for them. Timelines, uh, the bridge will open, I emphasise will open, because that's always been our position in autumn 2017. At that point we will close Silver Jubilee Bridge and that will have a full refurb. That was built and opened in 1961. It's getting a bit tired, not very really safe, but it is getting a bit tired. Um, and when it's been refurb, uh, it will uh, also have some sustainable transport on it. It will have new footways, new cycle tracks, uh, priority bus lanes, and it will go back to the local bridge that was designed in 1961 to take 6,000 vehicles. It now takes 60 to 70,000 vehicles a day, which shows you why we need first uh, gateway. Some of you may even have seen a programme on uh, Granada TV last night uh, about uh, uh, new ways of transporting people, and, and Silver Jubilee and, and Mercy Gateway featured on that in terms of the congestion. So that's the first part of my presentation, Chair. I'm now going to try and make the second part on the little linear stuff. So what this is, this is a, a fly-through. Um, it will show you the route, just to show you if you're not as familiar as we are with the route, where the route is, and it's going to show you what it will look like when it's built. We think this is really important because when you're sat in a traffic jam worrying about the road works, you want to know why you're having your time taken away. And what this DV does is show you what it's going to look like when it's constructed. But it also shows you some of the technical methodology for how the bridge and how the, uh, the roads are going to be created. We've been using this very heavily in schools and colleges because we want young people to understand some of the very sophisticated technology that's taking place, as I said earlier, so that we can create the engineers of tomorrow uh, and inspire young people, hopefully, to, to, uh, to develop skills in what will be a very exciting uh, job opportunity for them going forward. Chair, what I'm happy to do as we're watching this is to take questions if, uh, if there are questions from, from the authority. Thanks, David. Uh, can I just say, I mean, it's just a fantastic project. Really, isn't it? congratulations to everybody uh, involved in it. It's just a great project. Yeah, we've got that big lesson going in. It's just a reason. But are, there, are there any advice that you have for 
Okay, thanks. Thanks for that, David. Okay, so let's um, let's crack on. Um, now to item six, which is the Liverpool City Region Transport Partnership Integrated Transport Club 2015-16. And David, just David, David Brown to introduce them. Thank you. Thank you for the highlights. The
through the skills development uh, through the capital implementation. We're beginning a consultation process with the colleges over the process we're going through that will begin next week. Members will be pleased to know that in terms of the grad rating, the government applies to less of their implementation process. We are rated green. We have one of the best performing left in the government guide. However, there's still a significant volume of work to do. We have to design an insurance framework for government. The processes that we will apply in making decisions over how funding is used. We've already been through that process with the DSP in the past. We now have to adapt that to the fulfilled process. And this will be a technical document that we will have to take to the left board and then bring to the CA in due course. It's also worth noting that government did approach us in early October to submit some other scheme ideas for potential funding. Um, we're aware we spoke to these local authorities partners so in case they had anything in particular, but we reinforced the message from the parochial submission that we would like to cap some funds at such a key level. And we are hopeful that this will be approved in this latest round of funding. We've had um, uh, subtle indications that they are more willing to fund this type of project going forward. And we did indicate some schemes that might be funded, such as uh, the Office of Survivor Farm Bureau, but also TV and film funding for schools that have potential schemes to fund that project. The recommendations are really just to, make, to reflect on the work of the way and to ask the CA to ensure that the legal responsibility as a council body that we have the right capacity and capability in place to manage the program going forward. Okay, thank you, Mike. Um, any, any questions on this? Can, can I just, just make a few comments to add to what Mike said? I mean, first of all, I think it's such a really good um, result for it. It's 232 million at a massive of 2 million. You know, so it was a really good result. And, and the, the, um, the fund was three times oversubscribed. So no, I think I think we, we got a very good outcome to this. However, having said that, um, you know, delivery is now the key, uh, I think, as Mike just said. And, um, I, I think that, that um, the, uh, uh, the items in the report where you uh, uh, set out how that's going to be delivered, I think it's, it's really important that we monitor monitor that and have regular report, reports back, um, both to the left and to this body, on just making sure we're on track. And, and Robert, you and I have talked about this a number of times, and I know you're equally concerned that we have uh, arrangements in place to make sure that we do deliver these schemes. And I think that takes me to my final point, that, that we need to, and it's item B really in the recommendations, we need to just do a review of, of the capacity that we've got uh, within the city regions to make sure that we've got you know, appropriate arrangements in place to manage this program, because delivery, I think, is the absolute key. So I just wanted to make that point. Rob, I don't know if you want to add to that. Schemes that start on site in advance of that day will still be subject to the 
just kind of put formal report, but we had a formal request from West Ham's council to become an associate member of the Liverpool System Union in my case. I I um, received back, you know, hugely positively. I think it's good that the majority of councils are wanting to join with us. Um, so now we pass that amendment today. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that we will all be able to, I know it's been formal powers been delegated, that we welcome uh, less nights to, to have a status within the minor authority. Um, so just really giving notice to that as well.